Hello and welcome to another episode of Informed Society. In this final chapter of Borderline Personality Disorder, we're going to be talking about a plan of action for family of those with Borderline Personality Disorder. People who struggle with various Cluster B personality disorders such as Borderline Personality Disorder and coexisting disorders like Narcissism, Antisocial Personality Disorder, and Histrionic Personality Disorder. They will lie, falsify truths, and make up stories to cover their dirty tracks. They are self-serving individuals. Brave, honest people that have become victims of their abuse will stand up for themselves and others by telling the truth in sharing valuable information through observation and educating oneself. They take what they've learned to educate and protect themselves, family, and friends from further manipulation and abuse. These individuals care about others by not allowing the abuse to continue. That is the sole purpose of this entire series focused mainly on borderline personality disorder along with other accompanying disorders mentioned earlier in the summary. With this last chapter, we're just going to go into specifics, how you can help one another and be helped and not going to be naming any names or anything like that um, for anonymity purposes. Starting off with a uh, quote by Benjamin Franklin says here, how few there are who have courage enough to own their faults or resolution enough to mend them. Um, I really like that because it coincides with one of Dr. Phil's sayings, you cannot change what you don't acknowledge. People, especially close friends and family members who are connected to a problem that affects everyone, if they aren't willing to help by either listening or trying to understand any way that they are capable of, then they are choosing to be a part of the problem instead of the solution. Sadly, a lot of people don't want to talk about or try to understand serious and sometimes uncomfortable situations because they are afraid of taking any responsibility or acknowledging some things they are already connected to, whether they like it or not. Those who choose to ignore a problem doesn't make it go away. It only hibernates to come back another day until the problem is figured out and resolved. When there are close ties to a person or situation, the longer the situation gets ignored or pushed aside, oftentimes communication and healing will not get any better due to the lack of processing information together as a whole. Open communication and understanding each other is very important in order to resolve misunderstandings and conflict. More often than not, family and friends that have never had to deal with borderline personality disorder behavior will not know what to do because it catches them off guard. Those relatives of the person with BPD that have seen it and lived with it for multiple years of their life but unaware of the symptoms oftentimes will continue to allow the BPD abuse to get, take its course until it's reached its end of temporary insanity on a daily, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis, depending on how severe the person's deeply rooted in mental and emotional battles are going on in their head. Oftentimes, close relatives or friends will ignore it because they are emotionally drained and exhausted from continually being the BPD's emotional punching bag. When you don't have the tools, it makes everything more difficult. More often than not, those who haven't put in the extra time to thoroughly research certain behaviors and symptoms and feel they have tried everything to help the one with BPD, they allow the BPD abuse to carry on until the abuser have worn themselves out or wore out their welcome because they believe they have run out of options to try and help. Knowledge is power. When one understands the situation, they'll know how to deal with it effectively. Giving up on someone with BPD is the last thing any caring family member or friend should do. Unless their abuse has taken its toll on them and they cannot take any more for their own mental and emotional health and safety being at stake. Sometimes the best solution for everyone's health is separation until the abuser gets themselves well and family has a better understanding on how to not to be enablers of abuse. For a clearer example of others that just look at someone struggling with BPD and are not sure what to do or think about it, it's like looking at an alcoholic with an obvious problem and continuing to allow them to abuse themselves and get away with irresponsible abusive behavior. Some abusers aren't aware they are being abusive because 
they have allowed themselves to get away with it for a long time. That does not excuse the abuse and should be pointed out to the abuser in a reasonable and rational thought process and tone. Someone at some point that is capable and willing enough needs to be the hero in those situations and say enough is enough. We will not sit and watch any more or tolerate this kind of abuse you are doing to yourself and others. You need to check yourself into a licensed professional that understands and knows how to help people that struggle with these different abnormal and destructive behaviors that we all have witnessed and some of us have been abused from. Your destructive behavior will not continue in our presence or anywhere near the vicinity of family and friends, even through audible or visual contact by phone or social media, even if it is indirect, illegitimate, unrealistic, abusive words toward others you have conjured up in your own thoughts and feelings that don't match up to the who the people you are targeting and abusing. You will no longer abuse people for your own personal satisfaction and attempt to feel validated for the things you made up in your own mind. Don't allow abusers to attack, slander, and degrade your character, even if they are suffering from their own personal anxieties and delusions. At that point, if they decide to seek help, there is reliable treatment. There are several effective therapeutic plans that are effective for most patients with a combination of medications and psychotherapy. Those with relatively mild forms of the disorder may respond well to psychotherapy alone. Here are six types of psychotherapy for borderline disorder that have proven to be helpful. There's dialectical behavior therapy, then there's mentalization based therapy, there's transference focused therapy, then there's schema focused therapy, there's also general psychiatric management, and then there's system systems training for emotional predictability and problem solving, also known as steps. Dialectical behavior therapy has been said to be the most systematic and carefully studied form of psychotherapy for patients with the disorder. More complex disorders typically require dual diagnosis treatment. Psychotherapy with prescribed and monitored medication to help certain individuals regulate and balance their thoughts and emotions. This way, their overall progress will be more manageable and less painful of a process. It is important to remember that in medicine, simple cure-alls for complex disorders are extremely rare. This is especially true in borderline personality disorder. There are also group therapy and family therapy sessions that can be done together for support of one another in cases where BPD directly affects those closest to the one with BPD on a daily basis. A word of caution. Family or group therapy will not work well with those who are dishonest and manipulative. It'll work against all instead of for all. If the abuser chooses to not seek help and continue to not take personal responsibility for their own words and actions past, present, and future, and the abuser doesn't keep their abusive words and actions in check, a restraining order and gag order should be requested and summoned immediately, especially if you feel your life is in danger. If the abuser's offenses and personal threats are serious enough, police should be contacted immediately with proof and evidence followed up with a restraining and gag order. Those orders at that time should become permanent and not just temporary. Always, always take notes. Record incidents of the abuse going on so that you can protect yourself with evidence. That will include the abuser not being able to speak to any friends or family or co-workers of those being abused. If the abuser breaks those orders and it's reported, they will be fined and spend time behind bars. Be absolutely positive with undoubtedly evidence and understanding who, when, where, and why the abuse is coming from before contacting authorities, lawyers, and judges and going no contact. Otherwise, you can get in trouble for making false allegations and reports. You certainly don't want to be fooled by the abuser that pretends to be the victim while they attempt to make the true victims look like the abuser when that isn't the case at all. Remember, abusers with BPD will lie to cover up their smelly, dirty tracks. 
The abuser must also understand that if false allegations are made to police about their target victims, or to any government, judge, or nonprofit agency, they can be heavily fined and even serve time behind bars. Not if, but once they are told the truth through eyewitnesses and the receiving end of the party. If the occasion of the abusing person with BPD contacts you or tries to taunt you indirectly through social media in order to suffice their own personal boredom and misery or to feel validated for their false misleading information they put out there, make sure you mean what you said to them earlier and follow through on taking further action. Not if, but when the abuse happens again. Abusers need to understand that there will be consequences for their actions, even if they have almost zero mental emotional breaks compared to people with a healthy conscience. It is a sad reality, unfortunately, for some people that don't think they need help or refuse to get the proper help they clearly need. Some people get too comfortable with what they think is working okay for them and they don't see that they could make their life much more enriching, constructive, and positive if they would only recognize the amount of damage they continue to do to themselves and others and do whatever they can to change that behavior. With that said, I'm just going to reiterate the, uh, the quote from Dr. Phil McGraw. You cannot change what you don't acknowledge. For those with BPD that are repeat offenders, showing little or no regard for others' feelings, going to no contact with them may be the only option for everyone's health and safety. Just because someone chooses to go no contact doesn't mean they don't care. They go no contact because they care about the overall well-being of themselves and their family. With that said, keep your friends and family close, but keep your enemies even closer. Meaning, keep a close watch on your enemies to make sure they don't try anything stupid to further hurt you or your family. People have the ability to forgive and should for their own health and well-being, but they will not ever forget how they have been hurt and why. Once someone has continuously hurt someone without any remorse or apology, it's time to cut those people out of your life with no more chances. It will benefit everyone because it's better to come from a toxic home than to come from a toxic relationship. I'll leave you with a few more quotes from important historical figures. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence. Adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. There is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. It's better to look ahead and prepare than to look back and regret. So that's the end of my final chapter on um, borderline personality disorder. If you liked what you heard and would like to share some of your thoughts or stories, I'd like to hear them. And um, also um, look for the uh, video on histrionic personality disorder, narcissism, and antisocial personality disorder where I go a little bit further into the detail of those and that do coincide and relate to borderline personality disorder. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, it's, that's why borderline personality disorder is called that because it's pretty complex. All right, uh, again, thanks for watching and I look forward to creating more videos, informational videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.